Good morning. It is 12. It's 12.20 here in Idaho, and it is a beautiful November 2nd autumn winter day raining outside right now. It's not that cold. It's 52 degrees outside, which is nice, but I feel like it's going to feel a lot colder out there. We are officially in the third trimester as of this week. We're 27 weeks pregnant. Here's a cute photo. Wow, and today we're gonna do a vlog. We haven't done like a vlog in a while. A plant vlog, by the way. Hi, look. Look who that is. It's our friend. Raven just woke up. Yeah. So I thought, what better way to do like a sleepy autumnal vibe than get dressed up in our comfiest clothes possible and go get a coffee from the local coffee shop that we have. And then we'll come back and we'll water everything. We'll look at some plants. I think I have two plants that still have mealybugs. I have them separated. And then we're gonna fertilize as well. I do want to thank Urban Gardener so much for sponsoring this video. I have been using the Urban Gardener Super Growth Elixir, as well as their Say No to Bugs Elixir and their Leaf Radiance Elixir, which I'll show you about later. I've been using that now for a month and a half since taking my plants out from the humid greenhouse that they were in before. They have experienced unprecedented growth. I mean, some of my plants that haven't grown in like five, six, seven months was using the Super Growth Elixir on. And then after a week, I got new leaves on everything. And let's go get our cute girl coffee. Our cute girl coffee with our cute girl water. Completely unrelated, but I've been reading the Throne of Glass series. I've never really read before. I know that that sounds really stupid because I know how to read. I have never enjoyed reading before in my entire life. Hi. But because I'm such a bandwagon bitch, I decided I wanted to try reading. My mom influenced me while she was here. She read like 10 different books while she was here. And I was like, how are you just reading all the time? And then I realized that all of my other friends read and that I was the odd one out. And so then I was like, hmm. So I went to the Barnes and Noble, did what I did when I started plant collecting. I went to the Barnes and Noble and I literally spent three hours there and I looked through all the books and I was so overwhelmed. I almost looked up like what I should read, like what are good books to read, you know, whatever. Uh, but I decided against that because I don't want to read what other people think looks cool. I want to figure out what I like and then go from there. So I didn't read any guides. I had no idea what genre I wanted to start with. I also went to the library. So I like gave up on Barnes and Noble and I went to the library and I was like, I should just rent until I know what I want. And I rented a bunch of manga that I never read and I'm actually returning to the library today. And then I went back to the Barnes and Noble, got a coffee and I was like, okay, I'm gonna look around and I'm gonna be on the phone with my mom and I'm gonna talk through this like I'm vlogging. I read so many summaries of different books, so much. And then eventually I come across this table, which I'm like the last person at this party of Sarah J Moss. And it's like these three different series, the Crescent City series, a Court of Thorns and Roses and the Throne of Glass series. And my mom desperately wanted to buy me a book because she was like, like, if you wanna start reading, I will enable it. I will be, the enabler because she reads everything so um she just told me to pick out a couple books and uh i found the sarah j moss table and i was like oh this kind of looks interesting so again haven't done any research had no idea that this was a popular series or that multiple of her series are popular zero idea i think actar is what everyone's obsessed with like i get reels on my instagram page just talking about actar like everything's actar and i see nothing about throne of glass so i'm like i think i'm one of the odd ones out here because i'm obsessed i have it's been less than two weeks i think and I'm on Queen of Shadows. I read almost all of Air of Fire yesterday and then immediately started this one. Uh, my mom ended up buying me the hardcover book set, which was so sweet because she had this huge discount from all of the books that she's been purchasing. So she pretty much only spent like 20 bucks <laughs> and then the rest of it was all just like Barnes and Noble gift rewards, which was super kind of her to do, to spend her book rewards on me. But I am definitely making use out of it. I wanna read this and then I think I wanna read Actar and then I wanna do Crescent City, I think after that. But yeah, anyways, that's the book part. Yeah, reading is not my thing and randomly right now it is. I don't know, I just thought that was fun. A lot of people read, you probably all all read Akhtar or you are reading it or you've thought about reading it. I wish more people talked about Throne of Glass because I would talk about that all day, but instead it's just me and Jasmine. <laughs> I just feel like if I was gonna sit and do anything, for some reason playing video games makes me feel like I'm not doing anything. But sitting and reading, even though 
I'm also not doing anything, I'm reading, I feel like I'm at least enriching my mind because I'm reading and reading is considered intellectual. Even though I might as well just be sitting and watching an entire season of <laughs> Gilmore Girls. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day. You too. All right, now that the house has been opened up, we can begin. The first thing we're gonna do is actually reset my calendar. And yes, this is all planty related. So every month I write a calendar and it helps me plan the YouTube things. All right, and we'll take October. Okay, now I gotta go grab the new one. And November is also my birth month. So then what I do is I just write the calendar. And then I always have to do this. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. So it's our last one. This is our blue bill marker. So we have another whiteboard that's like over there where we keep track of bill due dates that aren't on auto repeat. And then like grocery shopping list. I draw little hearts around the days that we've gone through. <laughs> I just use these little markers to show those days. Moving from everyday posting to posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday has been really great because it's actually gonna allow me to get really far ahead, which is hard because normally at the end of a month, I burst post like every single day, even if there's only a few days left before the cutoff happens because how YouTube payment works is that you have the whole month to make money. So from the, the start, like midnight on the first to midnight on the last day, and then it takes 24 hours for the analytics to actually like populate, but you have from here to here to make money for the month of November. But then you don't get paid the money that you made from the month of November until December 31st. So you're always getting paid last month's stuff and it's it takes forever. So I'm not gonna make October's money, which we just finished October, until November 21st. Normally, I'll hit the 20th of a month and then I'll try to post every single day just because of the fact that I know it's gonna make me more money. But I think that the consistency of posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, always and forever will be better in the long run. The house looks really nice too. Like there is quite a bit going on. I am really happy with the amount of plants I have. And the one thing I would change, if I could change something, is I would move this out this cabinet because you know I just I don't think I'm gonna be dealing with that anytime soon so when Chris wakes up I'll probably ask him to help me carry that somewhere people keep telling me not to sell it and that I should just like work on it and fix it but because it's true if I did want to ever like greenscape a cabinet again I would have to do all of that work again and it costs like $300 to buy all the stuff for it it's been sitting there now for over three months completely empty and it looks awful and it's stressing me out maybe we can move in a table and we can move the tv back into the living room or something I don't know or I could just move my desk where that is and then have more plants on the left side of my desk I don't know and I should just do what I want to do, which is sell it. And then if I get a new red stuff, I'll get a new red stuff. Eventually, it's not that hard. But I like keeping my plants out in the open. And I like the jars concept. I think the jars is fun. <sighs> I'll sit and list this, and then we'll get into the actual plant stuff. This is the coffee I got, by the way. I went to a human bean today. Normally, I'll just go to the Starbucks or the Barnes & Noble Cafe. I've been going there a lot lately to just sit and read or to sit and like work on YouTube planning. Like... I write all of my videos in my book. I have a schedule for every single thing. My notes are incredibly detailed. And I'm probably gonna sell this for cheaper than I should, uh, just because I want it to be on. The last time I sold one of these cabinets, I sold a Millsbow that was built out. And I sold it for like, um, there we go. I sold a built out Millsbow for like $95 or something. Then I sit like this. <laughs> I'm just bringing you with me today. I promise we're gonna do plant stuff. <sighs> I 
okay it's been like 30 minutes and i finally listed it it took a while to decide on the copy i was gonna write yeah let's go ahead and get started with the plant care i'm gonna warm up my coffee and then we'll fill up the humidifiers first and then i think we'll water everything you can see how like thirsty my monstera is super dry leaves here um and then down here with my monstera alba this one's doing a bit better but I've also been babying the crap out of this little elbow guy. The Matilde especially is completely taking off. The big things we're gonna be watching for here are mealybugs on the other plants. I purify all my own water and then I put it into these jugs. And these humidifiers hold up to nine liters, but I only ever usually put four and a half in them. And there it is. Okie dokie, now that we have our humidity taken care of, let's start looking into our plant situation here. So it's a little messy because I've been moving plants like out of the way. This video is sponsored by Urban Gardener, a brand that has like quickly become one of my favorite brands, not only to work with, but to use on a daily basis. Urban Gardener is a really cute little brand that makes sprays for your plants. And you've probably seen these actually in your plant stores. They are all around. I have seen them in plant stores. So when they reached out, I was like, oh my God, yes. I absolutely wanna try your sprays. I like the leaf shine and I like the leaf radiance, but the super growth elixir has quickly become like one of my most used products in my entire plant collection. Next to the humidifier, and just like my humidity spray bottle, this, I'm using this all of the time. The Super Growth Elixir, this thing is nutty. The Super Growth Elixir is an all natural foliar spray that keeps leaves healthy, promotes growth, and protects them from disease. The company likes to describe this as a vitamin shot for your plants, and it helps with a variety of different recovery needs that your plant might have either from over or under watering or any kind of plant stress. The ingredients in this are water, castile soap, yucca extract, ketosan, Norwegian sea kelp, vitamin C, green tea extract, neem and oils of geranium, rosemary and thyme. And you're gonna wanna use this two to three times a week. Uh, I probably use it four times a week. <laughs> to me, the best part about this product is that it is people and pet safe when it's used as directed and it doesn't harm the butterflies or the bees. The Say No to Bug Spray. And this thing is awesome and you're actually gonna see me use this later in the video. And the Say No to Bug Spray is an all natural pest preventative and pest treatment spray. And they make it with a powerful blend of essential oils. And the final spray I wanna tell you about is the Leaf Radiant Spray, which is an all natural leaf shine spray. Traditional leaf shines, especially ones that are used by most florists, actually also will like block your plant's pores and prevent photosynthesis. This is also people and pets safe. It also will not harm the butterflies or the bees. None of these will. And it makes your plants look really, really nice. Some final points I just want to touch on is that none of these products require any mixing or handling of any chemicals. So as soon as you get the product, it's immediately ready to use, but you do want to shake these before use just because of all the oils in them you want to mix all of that up all of the bottles include all natural ingredients and all of the products are also plant-based and cruelty free they're all made in the usa these sprays feed your plants micro and macro nutrients and they also add a natural silica to your plant leaves to help with the extra shine one of the best parts is that the bottles are cute you don't have to hide them you can just leave them out i know that i decorate my plants with them Thank you so much Urban Gardener for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys uh, like the rest of this super long plant chore video. So we're just gonna reorganize this layout. And this usually goes in the window. Um, Ring of Fires still haven't dropped more leaves. So that is super awesome. This leaf is doing badly, um, the white leaf. I think it just got overwatered. It has some pockets in it of like some water <coughs> in here look pretty good my white princess is doing some stuff i know you can't really see the dendron red anderson is putting out a new leaf and that new leaf it just gave us 
The one in the middle right there is so gorgeous. Very good Mikeins gave us almost a full green leaf that has so much variegation on the stem, it doesn't even make sense. Two variegated Mikeins cuttings I have also growing in here. That leaf in the middle that you're seeing right there, that's like the full green one. Shake is doing really good. This is the newest leaf it just gave us. It like just gave us that leaf too, it's super brand new. On the back side, we're also getting a new leaf right there. See them sticking out? Then we have the ones that are down here. My Hoya species Sabah doing really nicely. Got a whole new growth point and stem coming in right there. That's brand new, some new leaves coming in. My variegated heteraceum also doing super well. Look at the new leaves, they're super pale. Alocasia Friduck is doing fine. It's not doing amazing, uh, but it's super pregnant right now. This one is just melting, but other than that, it's fine. We got the two newest leaves up here. I'm happy that it's less white. But that one's just melting. Other than that, it's totally fine. Retightening the ribbon, uh, which holds them upright so I can put them back in there. Guy, and I'm probably gonna leave the lid off for a while. I think that it's also too humid in there. And I'm gonna bring you down here for this, actually. This is so cool. You guys are gonna think this is awesome. We have uh, two plants, two special plants. That would be my philodendron, Spiritus Sancti, which is this friend. Then, also, my Monstera Aurea. And you might be thinking, Ashley, why is your Monstera Aurea just like laying there? Well, originally, because it was in limbo and I needed a place to plant it because it has roots. But then I was like, I don't know how I want to plant it. So I just kind of like kept putting it off and putting it off. But because I missed the Sancti like all of the time and the uh, lid for this, it's literally a cake plate, you guys. And don't worry, I'm always careful not to crush the leaves. I use this cake plate and like uh, like the cake lid and the plate because it's the only thing wide enough for the spirit of sancti. And it also doesn't touch the top. So it lets it spread out however it wants to. And I just threw, um, I, I put the orchid bark in like the soil medium in here so that it would help it stay more humid without me just like spraying it. I put the fucking Aurea in here and look at this, okay? So it's been in here now for maybe like a month and a half, maybe a month, and look at this. And it's growing. It's literally <laughs> growing in. So as soon as I noticed that, I've just been, I've been leaving it here. Um, so it can do what it wants to do. And then when this growth root comes in a little bit more, like actually plant it. But I just thought that that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's just propagating in air. Like the roots aren't even touching the soil medium at all. They're just laying there like that. <sighs> so I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, so I've uh, I've been growing Devin's Aurea cutting that I bought from him in here. I bought this for only $35, by the way. I have to tell him that I'm doing that because he, he doesn't know yet. <laughs> I've been kind of waiting. Oh, and then here's the other plants. Normally they look a lot nicer, but I'm still kind of like digging around in them, so. Oh, and just since we're over here, uh, let me show you the albo. It's about to give us a new leaf. It's super pregnant in the back. And this is the newest hardened leaf, which is the most variegated one so far. And I paid $80 for this eight plant elbow, which I have sitting on top of my other elbow. So it makes it actually look full. Um, and hopefully they'll grow up together. Over here on this side is a newly built out area and I'm not gonna turn off this light cause this area is actually darker without me having that light on. And our Puba Calyx is doing good. Alocasia poly, our watermelon peperomia. The Chameleon ZZ, I really wish it would give me some more growth, but it's just kind of stagnant. Uh, my Syngonium, you can see, desperately need to be watered. Oh, except for this ficus. This thing needs a huge water. I did just replant this, and you can see how thirsty it is. And then there's a jumping spider that lives up here. And I just let him live. I don't know where he is right now. Ponytail palm is doing great. Here's our jail plants. This is my Hoya Australis Lisa, which you can see some mealybugs on. And then it did spread some of the mealybugs to my Hoya caudata, so I moved it over here. And I have been intermittently be being very careful using a little bit of Captain Jack's and then some of the Say No to Bug Spray from Urban Gardener. I'm gonna have to go through and like manually remove them. I wish so badly I knew 
why my Lisa keeps getting mealybugs because this one plant, it just keeps getting them over and over. Why it jumped to my caudata, I don't know because the plants are literally nowhere near each other. I think our first order of business now is going to be to remove all of the hanging plants, which I cannot water um, on the windowsill. Cause you have a couple of them that I have to take to the sink. So I'm gonna take those ones to the sink, we'll water them, and then we'll start individually watering the other one. I was in a plant buying extravaganza for a little bit in September. Um, and I've stopped now, but I'm really happy with all the plants that I have and I'm really happy with how it looks. Get a load. And I really like these grow lights a lot. And I did just water my variegated string of hearts. So I don't think this, or <laughs> I don't know what I just said. My Hoya Canosa Compacta Vergata. I've been using the preventative spray, say no to bugs on this one. Ugh, I don't even want to think about this thing getting mealy bugs. Uh, yeah, it looks good to me. It doesn't look like there's anything here. And then my Hoya Crassia Patola. I don't see anything. It's just, it's so weird how it moved from all the way from one side of my room to the other. And my Hoya Croniana here is actually about to bloom. I'm so excited. It's got like five million peduncles on it. And one of them, the peduncles have like created the, like they're ready to bloom. It's ready to open, which is cool. Bottom, I just take whichever ones uh, don't have a hole in the bottom or whichever ones do have a hole in the bottom. Okay, now that they're sufficiently waterboarded, I'm gonna let them soak. And I'm going to keep letting them soak for like the rest of the day and I'm gonna keep intermittently uh, watering them with the sink water. Uh, and now let's go ahead and water the rest of the plants. Okay, well this is major depression. I just watered all of these plants and then all of my plants over here. And I turned on my camera, but then I didn't hit record. Okay, so plot twist. It's actually been a few days and I was able to get rid of my cabinet. Amazing, right? I haven't taken care of the mealies yet. They're still on the floor in the living room and we're gonna do that today. And now that it's bright outside, I'm actually gonna be spraying them outside and then like bringing them in once they dry. And then after that, we'll go through and like do that. But first I want to get my house set up. Now that I have this, big space right here where there is literally nothing um i want to get everything kind of like set up and look nice and i can't decide if i'm gonna move my desk there or what we're gonna do this huge space look at how bright it is though <laughs> like it's so bright that it makes my house look dark but that's yeah that's where my cabinet used to be it would get a lot of light and i kept all of my grow lights underneath my cabinet so it's kind of like a mess but I thought it would be kind of fun to do like a before and after. I also thought maybe about moving my couch there. I have this leather green couch and I thought maybe I could move it there for filming purposes, but I kind of like filming on my floor in that corner. So I'm not totally sure. But yeah, we're gonna do some like houseplant rearranging and then my other plants that we watered the other day are dry now. I was just hanging them there. So we're gonna put those ones back. There's just a lot of cords here. So let's get to work. I just wish I could decide what to do with the spot. You know, it's really bright. So having my screens there wouldn't be the best. I guess I could move some of my plants around again. Once we're done handling the moving around and stuff with the plants, I'm actually gonna put out Christmas decorations. And I went to Michael's today to buy a notebook for my Japanese study. At Michael's, they had a deal for three for $9 for these large candles. Are you joking? So I got Aspen pine, which smells like a Christmas tree. And then I got gingerbread cookies. And then I got mold cider. So we'll light these. All right, let's get our plants hung back up on the window. Also, um, the bags are for my cat. Raven loves playing with the bags. Oh my gosh, and it's so exciting because uh, my Croniana is blooming in like 30 different places. I'll show you in a second. Oh, it smells so good. Croniana literally smells like jasmine. Oh, that smells so good. If you guys want a fragrant Hoya, 
Okay. Hoya Croniana is amazing. Okay. This one spot right here is so unfortunate. It just gets like horrible light. And my cat really likes to eat my spider plants. So I found out the problem with my why my spider plants were never doing good was because my cat was just eating it all the time. Spider plants are non-toxic. Oh, look at how pretty they look. I literally have this curtain rod here, you guys, just for the plants. They'd serve no curtain functional purposes. I pull down the blinds. Those are up. Now let's try to figure out what we're gonna do about moving things around. I'm gonna collect my grow lights. I have a little bookshelf in my bedroom. It's not a bookshelf, it's like a table. Oh, I could do that with this one. Let's do that. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so I have this table and it has a lot of like photos on it from important moments in our life. I'm really into Polaroids. <laughs> um, and then I just have like some other random sh like shit on it. But what we could totally do is put this shelf cause right now it's just here cause there's no other place for it. So we could put that over there and then we could put some plants on it or well, I don't know. I thought maybe like it could be a place for like storage because I have a lot of things don't have places like I could store my camera stuff. Look at how dusty my old cameras are. I have a lot of lenses and batteries and um, stuff that just like doesn't have a home. Or we could use the table in the bedroom. Here's the bedroom table. It just has like books that I'm reading on it. And then like hobby stuff, it's like video games. It keeps our fan. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I knew what I wanted to do. Or I could just put my whole desk. No, I don't want to put my desk there. De moving the desk is not an option. I was thinking I could move some of these plants over there, but they're doing really good here right now. Like they're all growing, and the grow lights here are nice and helpful. I could move my tree. <sighs> It would probably be better if the tree was over here anyways. I don't know, I'm just gonna start moving some things around and then we'll see. There we go. It's lit. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the kitchen table. The croniana, the, the blooms, they smell like so strong that it's like making my entire living room area smell like jasmine. All right, what are we doing here, y'all? Ooh, it smells like whatever mold cider smells like. Oh, we're 28 weeks today. Oh, wow. It just got so dark in here. 28 week bump date. Crazy, I know. My sweatshirts don't fit anymore, so I just leave them pulled up. Hi, you watching? You watching from your bag? This tree is like so incredibly lopsided. It said, You got up! You're supposed to stay over there so they can watch you. Look at her. She went right back to her little spot. <laughs> Resumed watching, Raven. My elbow's putting out another new leaf. Looks like it's gonna be good. Y'all, bending over is getting harder and harder. Okay, time to vacuum. Well, we can move the tree farther over. So that's good. Face it that way for now. Get it to, oh, I think I gotta put my hair back up, which is depression. <laughs> Look at how goofy it looks. It's like, <laughs> y'all, I'm gonna be real. I have no idea what to do with this spot. I mean, I guess I can move everything over a little bit. Yeah, we can move for sure. I have gotten so good at keeping my house humid. It's 50% humid in here right now. I don't know what to do. Maybe I just move my fiddly fig somewhere else entirely. I should just have all my big plants on rollers. Okay. That looks nice. I either wanna put, I wanna put something there. 
Maybe I should put the couch there. Let's put the couch there just to see what it looks like. Uh, I don't like that. It feels like I'm just putting this here. And it really closes off the plants. Or even wants to come get on it. Come on. Over here. Yeah, new couch. What do you think? No? I like how it makes this side of the house look over here. It's very open now. So like there's no longer a big ass couch right there. It's gonna make getting to the plants in this corner over here really hard. And actually while we, while we do this, I'm actually gonna run out here real quick with these plants and then spray them with Captain Jack's. All right, I have alarms set for 10 minutes so that I don't forget that they're out there. You know what? I actually, I don't hate how it looks. I enjoy how open it makes this area feel. I don't love lining everything up along the wall like that for sure, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. My little sprays from Urban Gardener. Oh, there's a lot of cords under there. Essentially, what I'm thinking is coffee table goes like right here. We keep some plants on here, probably not this many, but then the, the plants feel more like mixed into the house. And then there's a lot of space back here for me to get uh, to like take care of stuff. I guess I can bring you closer. Um, I think what we could do is actually move the humidifier. Oh, it's our big light. What I'm thinking is what if we move the whole stand over a little bit? Then we're just kind of like spacing out what's over here. My only concern with this is that um, the elbow, which is right here, is not gonna get much love. During the daytime, it'll get a lot. I think it'll be fine. It just looks like it's missing something. Okay, so I think I like this. Um, the way that the Monstera, I angled it better and then I like spaced them out. Again, I know that like picture is super blown out for you because of the lights, but I think I like this. We're not done yet. Obviously there's like plants on the couch, but I think I like the alcove there. I also moved my Monstera Albo. Um, I'm gonna put it right here for now and I'll probably elevate it, but it's on the floor right here right now. Um, we're gonna figure it out. Okay, and we are gonna fix two of the grow lights um, on my Sansi lights, the video I just posted. So I was thinking maybe we'll use zip ties look like it. Okay, so we're gonna use Velcro instead. Uh, I'm gonna go bring in the plants. We gotta bring in the plants that are outside. All right. I'm gonna actually fix my uh, lights. I move them around too much, uh, which means that the sticky pads on just one of my pairs of the Sansi Puck lights uh, they weren't working. There's a spider living up here for sure. That's a big web. Okay, and I'm gonna put the other one like right on this bracket right here. I'm gonna take off the bottom. Then we will just stick guy right here. Now we just have one more. And I'm just using the size small. Uh, little 3M Velcros. Oh my god, it's so bright. <laughs> All right, let's rip off these little stickers. By the way, I passed my glucose test. So, allegedly, as long as nothing goes critically wrong, um, I should be able to have like a nice relaxing uh, third trimester. Nice, now it's finally all lit again. I'm gonna actually move. Uh, this cactus somewhere else. I wonder if we should put Glorious in there. And then, variegated spuparoo. 
Ooh, that's pregnant. Let's go. Oh, that's so exciting. I love new leaves. Okay. This is the situation. It's very bright. I'm gonna bring you closer. First of all, look at the spider web. You see it? There are not spider mites. Those little things on there are dust flecks, not spider mites. But the, the web is all over. I'm gonna take my vacuum, vacuum it up. But my variegated string of hearts is doing really good. And then the Peru it has a burn from one of these lights falling onto it when I wasn't around. So that's why it looks a little stinge. It was looking so good. Uh, here's the newest leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? There was another new leaf, but it got burned. Uh, and then there's the new one that's coming in, coming from the one that got burned off. I might move this as well uh, somewhere else. I don't know, maybe we'll put all the jars on the floor now. All right, let's get to actually setting up the plants here. And I'm gonna go put on some gloves because I think I'm gonna repot things and then probably give some plants away. So I'm gonna start, I think, by putting all the jars on the floor. Oh, the sun's coming out! Yay! Okay, all the jars on the floor. The Safety Oreo combo go on the floor. So if we keep all the jars down low, then we'll have space to move some plants from the coffee table. I wonder if we should put the elbow up here. Let's just test it. Kind of does. We're definitely sacrificing a lot of space to do it. Mm, I guess it's not that much space. That's pretty though. I like that. All right. Uh, let's repot some of our plants real quick. Oh, it looks so pretty. It's so bright. I love when the sun's out. It gives them so much light. It's ridiculous. But I like the flo the jars on the floor thing. It makes me feel kind of witchy. I'm just gonna replant some plants over here super fast. Um, Alocasia poly. I don't really want any more. I'm gonna also get rid of my Xerxes. Decarii, my Pilea peperomioides, and my watermelon peperomia. I think I'm gonna get rid of my uh, little Paradiso Verde as well. Um, and I just haven't been loving it. When I like plants, I actually take care of them. Uh, and I have not been taking care of that one, so. It's a quick and dirty repot. I was thinking the other day about how much fun it's gonna be to go plant shopping with Kai like when he's old enough to like understand that he's kind of alive, you know? Like when he's like a little baby, it probably won't be as fun. But once he's like aware and he can like talk and point at things, I think that will be so much fun. That way it'll keep it kind of humid and I can like put some water in there. And I just repotted these too, so. These are the ones I got from, um, one of the collabs I did. And I just don't love these plants. I've just been keeping them because I got them, but I'd rather have these pots for plants that I'm excited about. This Xerxes Decarii, I have been trying to get to grow for literally years, you guys. Plant grab bags. Now, who are we gonna pot? We got four, oh God, excuse me. Four pots. We should put the Florida Beauty in one of them. Okay, we're also gonna get rid of my normal Australis. I have not been super in love with it. And I'm gonna put my double ring of fires in here. Plant grab bags. All right, let's mix up. I just repotted these plants, so the soil is fresh. Which is why I decided to like dump them out. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okie dokie. We're gonna put the ring of fires in their pot first. These are the ones that I got from the Fred Meyer video, the R&D nursery ones. I have yet to like actually lose um, any more leaves on them. The leaves look kind of a little goofy silly, 
but they're not like, they're not like bad. There's one that looks a lot better actually. And these are both of the R&D nursery fires. Let's put our Gloriosum in our smallest pot. That's probably good. This one, whenever it dries out, uh, since there's like only moss in it, it just kind of goes a little crazy and stupid. Gloriosum, and then I will remove the reduced price tag uh, later. That looks nice. I like that. Can you even see the good plant, like the, the done ones? Yeah, okay. Next plant, let's do our Florida Beauty in this big one because it desperately needs the support. All right, we're actually gonna take it out of that plastic pot. Take it out. And this one I do also want to air layer. I'm also gonna give this one a steak uh, to hold it upright, and then I'm gonna air layer it. Florida Beauty in a pot. So it actually looks cute. Okay, we have three plants left in three pots. So I'd say that this is pretty successful. They're, they're all in these three and a half inch pots. This one could go, yeah, let's do the Ring of Fire in our like deserty pot because the colors kind of go together. Then we have our two crawlers. We have our silver, ooh, got Andy in that one spot. Uh, silver or something. Philodendron, oh, pasta silver. I'm trying to think about like which green looks better. The dark and the dark? I think the dark and the dark and the lighter looks good. And then the silver pasta and the terracotta I think looks nice. You know, I really like not having the couch right here. It makes the house feel so, so open. I'm gonna take off this leaf because it has some, it's got a really weird fungal infection on it. You see that brown spot? It looks really bad. So here is our little silver blue mania. I'll pot it up, or I'm sorry, silver pasta. Silver pasta. I'll pot it up. I used to avoid growing crawlers um, because I just hated dealing with them. And I, I couldn't figure out how to like actually grow them in a, a way that was like positive for the plant. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I'm just not going to grow them. Uh, but I love so many of the crawlers that exist. Like, I am obsessed with Gloriosum. I love Plowmanii. And part of my like, my plant resolutions, it's not really a plant resolutions. Uh, because it's not the new year, but um, part of my list was to actually learn to actually take care of plants that I don't know how to take care of because so many times I'll be like, oh, I want this plant, but I don't want to deal with it. And I decided that if I really want a plant, I want to actually learn how to like take care of it. So I'll give it a shot, bring it in, and then we'll see how that goes. Instead of just like deciding for myself that I can't keep that plant because of the fact that it, it is the way that it is. You know what I mean? The pot is by, is from a uh, clay by Shay. We are gonna do this too. Um, this was my Syngonium Aurea and it was huge. And then I planted it in this pot and it has committed like seppuku. So we need to put that in a, di in a different pot. And then we have um, this one, this pink princess. The reason this one didn't do good was because the pot it was in, this one, this terracotta, it was drying out so fast. I kept gaslighting myself and I was like, no, it's okay, it's okay. But this one doesn't have drainage holes, um, so it should thrive in there. The other Syngonium I have that's doing really well is my Faustena. It's, it's, it's not even in a pot, it's in a glass bowl. All right, now let's figure out how we want them to look. The Gloriosum and the Florida Beauty over here in the bright corner. I put our Florida Beauty right here and it's gonna get a lot of light there and it's gonna get good humidity. I do wanna put my Ring of Fire over here, this one specifically. Uh, and then I also wanna put my 
my uh, Oreo Syngonium over here. I need to get a tray for this one. Don't let me forget you guys. And we are already getting a new leaf up here as well, even though this one just came in. Seriously, air layering your plants is like, you'll thank me later when you air layer them. My very not and sunny eyes right here. And we still have a place in the back. Hmm, this is hard. It's really hard to pick where to put things. Maybe we'll put both of these back there. We can try putting my silver plamanii and my er, silver pasta. We're gonna put our cutting of our pink princess right here. Other than that, there's not much to place. Let's do the rest of the house now. So this I thought could be the syngonium table because I gotta move my plants away from the window. And right now I do actually keep quite a few plants in the window and they're all syngonium. Well, two, there are two of them are syngonium. We have this one, syngonium red spot. And then we have this one, which I need a pot for. And this is my syngonium mojito. So I thought it would be kind of fun <laughs> to just have like a syngonium table. I really need to do something about this though, but I gotta get like an actual situation for him. I have this jar, so we could put him in here. <gasps> oh, does he not fit? Well, <laughs> he doesn't really fit. I literally just put him in this vase. <laughs> so, he's just in here. I took him out of his cup and uh, we're just gonna do that. It's kind of neat. Dude, I just love Syngonium. I love them so much. The last thing we have at the window is this little uh, Epipremnum Albo, which actually is giving us an Aurea leaf right now, which is really exciting. See that? That's gonna be Aurea. Oh, I can evict that one. Okay. I have this guy who has uh, spider mites. This Spiracosum died from spider mites. So I'll go dump this out. Okay, hold on. I gotta get in here. Wrap this guy around top. He's got huge aerial roots here, which we are gonna turn into normal roots. And he's gonna look ugly for like a little bit, but then like his leaves are gonna redirect and then we'll go from there. I actually, I really, really like how open my house feels now. Just wrapping this aerial root around. And this is a terracotta clay pot. Okay, now I just have to make a hole for this little plant. <laughs> this is adorable. We're gonna be really careful. And this thing already has roots, so we're not like rooting it. I'm just taking one very long strand of Epipremnum panatum albo and kind of like forcing it to wrap around itself. So it's gonna become a pot of plants. But right now it looks really stupid because all the leaves are curled uh, in different directions. This one's gonna be a journey, but it's okay. We'll go on it together. All right, so here's our goofy finished product. See how goofy it looks? Yeah, it's all right. It'll, re it'll rearrange itself here soon and then it'll be good. But for now, it's gonna look dumb. So I think we'll actually put it over here. So we have a lot of space right here. Uh, for some plants. We're gonna fire over here, which needs a drainage. We'll also put this, which is my Hoya uh, Bertoniae. Actually, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna put my uh, ZZ Chameleon over here. And then right here in this spot, I'm gonna put the Species Affinity Bertoniae. I should eventually put this in a hanging, but it's gonna get uh, insane light right here. Right there. You can see how bright it is right there. Nice. I think, <laughs> oh, it's my other Hoya. Okay. I have this uh, Hoya Matilde that's doing really, really good right now. And then, right there. And then I think on the back side we'll put my money tree and that's it. I just filled them in this video, but it's been three days since the video, since I actually made it. The one plant that is homeless right now is um, my fiddly fig tree. 
I am not sure what to do with that. I'm not gonna lie. But everything else looks really nice. I like this layout a lot, actually. I'm not a fan of the straight line of furniture along the wall. It looks like I just tried to force stuff to be there, but, um, you know, what can you do? I think that's like fun though. I like that. And you know what? I'm gonna actually switch these two places of the big Hoya and the little plant table. Bring her right here. And then we will put, oh, my bad. And then we'll put the big Hoya up right back here. And then we move tray. I like that better. That looks better. Uh, we still don't have a place for the fiddly fig, but that's fine. That's completely fine. Who needs a place, right? We can just, it can float. We'll just float it around the house. I do like the syngonium table though. Tell me what you guys think. I think it's really cute. Oh, it's so cute. I'm sorry. That's just adorable. Look at this one. This is like my favorite. The little pot face. This had one leaf when I planted it in here. Hmm. I like how it looks now. I just, a couple things feel different and weird. And you know, I think it's just gonna take me getting used to it. And I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the stuff that's underneath here. All right, I'm gonna go get two large plastic saucers from the garage. That's probably better. You know, I'd only need two saucers and then this whole section wouldn't like drip water. If you watch this video all the way through entirely in one sitting, uh, comment a duck emoji. <laughs> I love what we did today. I'm really happy with what we did. Now we just gotta clean up the couch. Pog. All right. Poggies. All right, I'd say that's it for the living room. All right, let me give you a tour of the plants real quick. Look at them. Oh, this area looks so nice. Here is all of the syngonium. I tried to give them like a leveling system. So the tallest ones in the back corner and then they kind of scale down from there. And then here's our little food tray right there. But I did put all of these on saucers, so now the water won't like overflow unless I do a bad job at watering. So um, it'll be fine. But yeah, none of those will overflow anymore. And then here is this area. I'm really proud of it from the bottom area with all the jars to Kind of like this table right here. My Halo Mikens, Anderson, Beauty, Albo. Everything just looks really, really nice. Except for the cord management. Ignore the cord management. <laughs> it just looks really good. I really like it. And then there's Raven's spot. This is also where I'll sit when I film. And then the window's obviously a bit darker because it is nighttime. But then we also redid this section. And I do need to water that one specifically, but. I think it looks really good. And I like putting this Hoya back there instead of in front. The only thing we haven't done is clean out these guys of their mealies. We're gonna try to do that real quick. And I'm just gonna time lapse that. How I handled mealy bugs was I had already sprayed it with Captain Jack's and then I went over it and sprayed it with the pest preventative from Urban Gardener Say No to Bugs. And then I took Q-tips in hydrogen peroxide and alcohol and I manually removed all of the mealy bugs that I saw that didn't die. Okay, so I finished cleaning up and putting everything away. I did just spray down my plants with the say no to bugs 
uh, Urban Gardener spray. So those are just drying, but this is kind of the finished vibes. It is really nice in here. It's so utterly cozy. And then there's of course my desk. I like it. I really like what we did. It feels so open now that there's not like a couch right here. I love it. Aw, I love it. Okay. I may move my fiddle leaf fig over here, but for now I just have it <laughs> against the wall right there. I'm just sorry, but can we just like, this is so nice. Oh, it actually looks like a living room. Then here's my little syngonium. And then over here is my plants. Super blown out because of the light. And then down here is where I'm gonna be keeping my Urban Gardener sprays. On the floor, on the tray. But yeah, I sold the whole cabinet, I think for $200, which there's over $750 worth of like stuff put into it. I really like it. I love the vibes. Like, are you serious right now? Bro, the vibes right now. Thank you so much Urban Gardener for sponsoring this really long video and uh, being so patient with me. And yeah, that's gonna be it. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you to all my members for being members. And I'll see you guys in the next houseplant section. How cute though, I'm sorry. It's, hello? It's amazing. I love it. All right, I'll see you guys next time, bye.